there's signs all over that says, do not feed the alligators, do not molest the alligators. Um, I guess there's different levels of crazy, and this is definitely in the top of the list. Hey there, Spencer here on another photo adventure. Uh, this is a continuation of our last video on when we mixed the Perceptol from Ilford. If you didn't get a chance to check out that video, I'll put a link down below. Uh, so today I'm at the Sleeping Turtles Preserve in Venice, Florida. So it's, I've been here a few times with a digital camera years ago. I brought this 8x10 once. Um, didn't make it very far. I just, I guess, mood wasn't right, whatever. So today, uh, it's nice, cool, breezy out. Breezy could be bad, right, for the 8x10, but we'll uh, find a nice little shaded spot or for buffered from the wind. But uh, yeah, so really nice county park here in sarasota county so as you can see we're on the river that's if i don't fall over uh, this is the mayaka river uh, if you've seen some of my videos at the mayaka river state park this is the same river that comes on down and eventually empties out into charlotte harbor down in you might as well say uh, port charlotte and punta gorda florida so yeah, so anyway, so my goal today is to get at least one shot uh, on FP4+, Plus, and I'm going to take two, and then I'm going to develop it per Ilford's instructions, and we'll see what happens. Um, again, I'm not going for National Geographic today. <laughs> I just want to get something on film that I can then try this new developer on, and then what we'll do is in the next video, we will look at it together on the computer and see you know see if it was worth it or not so all right let's see if we can go find something to shoot Okay, so I'm walking along the riverbank here. This is a little bit off the main trail. And I came upon this tree. It's got a couple boards nailed to it and looks like some ropes. I've lived in Florida a while. There's alligators in the river. I don't know if I'd crawl up this thing, get on one of these ropes and swing into the river, especially something I can't even see the bottom of. Granted, you can't see the bottom of a lot of lakes and things, but there's signs all over that says, do not feed the alligators, do not molest the alligators. Um, I guess there's different levels of crazy, and this is definitely in the top of the list. All right, we'll move on and see if we can find something a little less nuts. All right, so I think we found a composition. Uh, I hiked towards the back of the park where I'd been before to try and maybe get a uh, bend in the river. I thought maybe that might be kind of interesting. But right now this time of year, it's so dry, the river's down. Uh, it looked like a mess. There was nothing that was really, you know, stand out as like a subject. So I passed this on the way in. We were walking through. I'll get out of the way. It's a pretty amazing old oak tree. And I'm guessing from the top, Looks like this might have been uh, damaged by Hurricane Irma that we had here in September. So I thought, well, it's kind of interesting. It has a lot of texture and that's really what I wanted to test today. That in the sky to see if I'm gonna get any uh, banding problems with the developing. So we'll get nice even development. So we'll see if that works. So this kind of fits the bill for what we're doing. I am shooting at landscape orientation. I have the main trunk of the tree to one third of the side and then the branch kind of goes into the frame. So I thought that might be kind of fun. So we'll see. So I figured let's meter this and see what we got. <clears throat> now, perceptual, or perceptual, yes. The developer um, perceptual says that you have to perceptol. Is that it? Perceptol? <laughs> I must be getting heat stroke out here. All right, it says, that is you're going to lose about one stop uh, in your film speed when you use it. So, okay, I now know that. So um, I'm using FP4+, which is ISO 125 box speed. 
And so it's say half of that would be like 64, but Ilford's chart in the actual box is, says 50. So I'm gonna play along with Ilford's directions and I've set my meter to 50. So let's see what we got. Now I'm gonna shoot at F45 just to kind of hopefully keep some diffraction down if I'm getting any. So I am using the, um, the sight through, the spot metering. So I'm going to put it underneath the, I don't know if you guys can see that, underneath where that resurrection fern is that's hanging out there. That seems to be the darkest area. Of course, we will meter multiple spots. So it's reading two seconds at F45. Let's just check the base of the tree. That's reading half a second. Let's try the top where it's really dark. Two seconds. Two seconds. Okay, so that's at ISO 50. So I'm going to put down two seconds in our shadows. I will have to check reciprocity. I think that's about three seconds with uh, reciprocity, but I will double check. Now we can check our highlights, which in this case, I will meter the blue sky. Sounds like we got a boat coming. You know, it's supposed to be out here in the middle of nowhere. Now we got all this stuff going on. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, the blue sky is reading one eighth of a second. And the cloud portion, the very white part of the cloud, is reading 30th of a second. So one over three zero. In case you couldn't hear me. Okay, so we're basically, so I would probably put down 30th because that is our highest highlight, right? So one over 30, and I'll just put cloud in parentheses. Okay. All right, so we got two seconds, one second, half a second, quarter, eighth, 15, and 30. So that's six stops. The film should be able to do this. So I'm just gonna put difference in stops, six. I was right down my dynamic range just in case. All right, so let's put this away. Now let's check the reciprocity and see what that's gonna be. So let me grab my phone here. Okay. Reciprocity timer has been very, has been very helpful. Uh, this makes the math so much easier. All right, so two seconds. Yeah, it's three seconds. So basically I'm going to put it on bulb, or I'm sorry. Yeah, probably we'll put this on bulb because I can press and hold the shutter for um, three seconds and then just let go. So that's what we'll do is we're going to get the film in it and get it set up and then we'll get ready to take our photo. Okay, so here we go. We got the film loaded, uh, took the dark slide out. Here comes a cloud. <laughs> It's all part of the fun, right? <clears throat> so I metered this for full sun. Looks like it's just a little cloud, so we don't have to wait too long. I'm just gonna double check the exposure real quick to make sure we still have our two seconds. Right now it says four seconds just because a cloud went over, so actually our exposure time doubled, which is kind of interesting. That's all right. It's nice to be out with nature, relax. Okay, so here we go. We're back in full sun. And here comes another cloud. So, oh, looks like we're getting there. Yeah, so I think two seconds is going to be it. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna play in two seconds. Okay, so I got the dark slide. I'm just gonna count. Let me get all official here. Now, since I don't have my Reese tripod with me, I'm gonna to have to be very careful that I don't 
wiggle the tripod. So this is not really made for this, but it's light to, for doing this kind of stuff. So we're just going to take it easy. Now the shutter is set for bulbs. So I'm just going to press and hold it. And again, we're shooting F45. And that should be it. Let's see here. How's our, we just lose our light again? Yeah, not for long though. We got a big open space coming. By the way, if you haven't seen my other videos, this is a Zone 6 8x10. It was made in uh, Newfane, Vermont. And the lens I'm using is a Nikon W300mm 5.6 lens and a Copal 3 shutter. So that's kind of the little bit about the camera. It's a very nice camera, like all the controls and everything on it, but it's heavy. It's um, with the lens, it's 20 pounds. So it's the F64 backpack does a pretty nice job uh, being, for me being able to, to carry it. So down the road I am looking at possibly getting something a little bit lighter. Uh, just I have some back issues already so this we're going to make this work but uh, down the road that is something I'm looking for. So all right it looks like our light is coming back. So I'm going to hurry up and get this real quick. So here we go. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. There we go. I'm going to put the dark slide back in. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to reverse the film holder. I don't think the video camera can see what I'm doing, but um, basically this camera has what's called a bail back on it. And that allows me to pull the back open with like a metal bar. And that's what allows me to uh, spring the back open. All right, so here we go. We're going to pull the next dark slide out. And I'm going to cover that back up. So we're going to cock our shutter again. We are still on bulb, nothing has changed. So here we go, ready? 1001, 1002, 1003. Okay, a little longer, but that's all right. Film can take it. All right, so I'm going to get this all broke down in the bag and uh, we'll see if we can find something else. Okay, so I think that's gonna be it for us today. Uh, I'm just gonna shoot the two sheets to see if that uh, developer is going to work for us. So in the next video we'll do, I'm going to go ahead and develop it and the next video will be after we scan it and everything so we can all look at it together to see how it turned out to check the sharpness and the grain and uh, if there's any streaking and all that kind of good stuff. So anyway, so it should be good. Uh, if you'd like to leave me a comment or have a question, please leave it down below. I do read and reply to all the comments and suggestions and I appreciate everybody that does. I also would uh, like if you'd prefer to like and subscribe uh, if you want to see more future episodes like this. And as always, I thank you for watching.